three different credit agencies to make sure that nothing pops up that's not supposed to be there, right? And the other thing is you can miss a payment by a day and it could hurt your score dramatically. When the downturn happened, my credit score went from a 720 something at the time to 580. Why? I didn't do anything, nothing changed. But there, the way that Equifax looked at, at, the, at the scoring system was much different because they themselves had to deal with the change in, in the economy. So without missing a payment, without doing anything different, because of the fact that I had so much credit under my name, because I signed on behalf of the organization, and I had its oodles of credit references that checked my credit, my personal credit on a yearly basis, like 180, right? Because of that, they changed one of their metrics and my credit score dropped by 150 points without me doing anything. So guess what? That became critical for me to manage my credit. Because now the perception was I had, it was junk credit status, right? So I had to learn to manage my credit. So I manage my credit today. I, I, I don't wait to put things, um, I, I stopped writing manual checks because if you're a couple days behind because you know, you've got your kids events or you're at home or you're on vacation or you're working or what have you, or you're traveling, you don't have your checkbook with you, then you're late a day or two, that doesn't make you a bad creditor or, or a bad you know, credit risk, but it does damage your credit. So repair it if it's, if it's bad, you can repair it. Just because you have bad credit doesn't mean you can't repair it. Focus on repairing your credit, manage your credit, and monitor your credit, right? And then from a business perspective, one of the single most important things that you can do with your creditors is communicate. When you have a plan, communicate your plan. Educate your lenders on what you're going to do. Talk to your lenders about your failures and your successes and where you are in your plan. And if you have to move those, you know, your ambition, don't be very ambitious, meaning, let me rephrase that, sorry, let me take that back. <laughs> Under promise, over deliver. Do the same thing with the lender. Tell them what you're gonna do, make sure you do it. It'll build credibility and it'll build credit capacity. Your credit capacity in large format today, I know there's a banker in the room because I saw his tag and he's shaking his head. <laughs> you have to give a gentleman like him, you have to give him, he has to believe in your business. He'll go fight for your business. He'll go fight for you if he believes in you. But if you miss what you say you're gonna go do, he has no, you, you, you know, you just took out one of his legs, right? Now he's, he's off balance. You, these folks will believe in you. They are there to build a relationship there with you, but you have to give him a story that he can go defend and promote in front of his lenders. And it's harder to get money today than it was years ago. So protect your personal credit, build a relationship with your, with your banking institution, educate them on your business, um, talk to them about your plan, show them your plan, you have to have a plan. If you don't, then it's hard for him to believe in your plan. It's hard for him to say, what position do you want to put your banker in? Hey, um, Bob, I got this customer. He's a really good guy. I like him a lot. I believe in what he's doing. Can we give him a million bucks? <laughs> or, look, I just met with this gentleman. He's got a plan. He put a strategy in place. He's got time frames. He knows what his business model is. He knows exactly what you know go-to-market strategy he's going to have. I think he deserves to us to look at giving him a million bucks. So that's the difference. What position do you want to put your bank?